Hi everyone, it's Tuesday the 17th of March and it is 20 past 4. I can actually see my clock from here for a change. <laughs> it's actually quite a lovely afternoon. The sun's shining, there's some cloud in the sky but the sun is shining. Spring is just around the corner because I can see buds on the tree. And the grass was cut by the grounds team this morning. I think it was a bit early. I'm sure they're earlier this year. I've actually noticed that there's a lot of grass actually growing what seems like rather early as well. Anywho, quite a bit to talk about. I've got some stuff here to show you for a project that I've had ongoing since last summer, so eight, nine months, something like that. Finally bought some stuff to progress with that. <clears throat> I'm going to get some more stuff this weekend. Um, some stuff to chat about with the model railway because I'm having a bit of a change around on there again. <laughs> Don't know how many times this track has been up and down, up and down, up and down on here, but never mind. Um, but first, I do hope that my viewers are doing well in light of what's currently going on around the world due to a certain um, virus that's going around. <laughs> Apparently, YouTubers cannot say it. So I've heard, I've heard a couple of YouTubers that I watch regularly have said that if they say it, they will get demonetized. I'm not monetized, but at the same time, I don't want to risk the video being taken, taken down for saying it. I think it's completely ridiculous that we cannot say it. I don't know what YouTube's beef is with that, but anyway, I do hope we're all doing well. I'm doing fine. I'm actually trying to stay in, well, I'm not trying to stay in, I'm just trying not to go out into public places as much as possible. Sometimes you can't avoid it, you know, there's things that you've got to do, like you need to go and get groceries and things, but if you can actually find them. You see we're bloody like gold at the minute. Anywho, let's move on from that. So. I've had a fish tank in my kitchen I've been wanting to set up for ages. My stepdad has actually just bought a lovely aquarium complete with fish, so he got rid of his old one. One of my um, little brother's mates actually had the old one. Um, and my stepdad, a week ago, picked up the other one. I can't remember if that was a week ago or if that was this weekend. <laughs> anyway, he picked it up and it's bloody gorgeous and some gorgeous fish in it as well and that sort of prompted me to want to get mine up and running again and then Monday I was in Lidl's Monday evening and I found that in their middle section I had a whole bunch of stuff for aquariums so I bought a bunch of stuff I pretty much bought everything they had there on offer but I still need some bits so I'm going to have to go to um, a place called Angel Aquatics, which is up on the garden centre here in town, and just get the rest of the bits I need. But I'm probably about two-thirds of the way there with what I need now. Half, maybe two-thirds of the way there. So, here we go. So right up front, I've got four ornaments, different sizes. I didn't have any of the fake plants, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to get those from the fish place. But uh, I actually quite like that. I must remember to take these tags off. So I've got two of these sort of little structures of different sizes. I do like that one. And two of these rocks of different sizes. I think they'll look nice sort of spread around in the tank. Tank. That's the second time and the second attempt at this video that I've actually said tank. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I also got a fish net and one of these thermometers to go in it. And I'm thinking as well, I might get one of those stick-on ones that stick on the side of the tank. But uh, this is all Lidl's had. Uh, I've got a filter. And I decided to go tropical fish, so I've got the heater. That was $9.99. That was $9.99. And these were $4.99 each. I don't know why these smaller ones weren't cheaper, but never mind. <coughs> uh... I don't actually know what the price of those were. I don't think the receipt is here. I've probably screwed it up, put it in my pocket, and uh, then emptied my pocket into a bin. 
But anyway, that's what I've got so far. What I need is some air hose, because I've got an air pump. <clears throat> I believe it does work. I could feel air coming out of it when I powered it up. So I want to get an air stone. I do have an air thingy in there. It's like a plastic block that's meant to stick on the side of the tank, but I think the suckers are gold, so I'll have to go in the bottom. And it's got a plug coming off of it for some LED lights on it. So I might use that one, but I'm still going to get an air stone just in case I change my mind or that doesn't work properly. Air hose, air stone, the gravel or some sort of media to go in the bottom of the tank. Some fake plants. I could go real, but I don't want snails all over my tank. So, <clears throat> And it's only a small tank, so I think some fake plants in there will be sufficient enough. And I need to sort the light out. Obviously I've just got a standard for us a tube in there at the minute. Well, I say in there, it's lying in the bottom of the tank because the original light fitting in it was dead. So I had to rip all of that out. And I got given a, one of those light units where the tube clips in the lid. There'd be two clips in the lid you'd clip the tube on and plug the waterproof caps on the end. So I've got one of those fittings, but I've got no way of clipping a tube into the lid at the minute. Unless I can find some suitable soft clips obviously you don't want them to break the tube or failing that i'm gonna have to just find a different light fitting i might have to just dip into my pocket and get a new one if it comes to that it comes to that i don't mind i'll get an led one or something <clears throat> um i'll just i'll have a look when i go up there i could have got up there today just to have a look if i wanted to I could still actually, but I can't be bothered to cycle up that way. There's, even though it's nice and sunny out there, there is a wind blowing, so... So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to getting this tank set up now. Oh, I topped up my electric meter earlier. Did it actually go through? It did. In the corner of that, I've got 23 days left. And 26 pounds and a penny. That's what I like about this. Don't have to touch it. <laughs> I just go into a shop with my little card that I got with it and they scan it, I pay them and by the time I get home my meat is all topped up with credit. So anyway, I digress. Right, another purchase I made last Friday is some cable. I got this for the model railway. Although I really wanted the silicon one but I didn't think to check that because this is just solid core PVC. So I think I'm going to get the box with the silicon insulated ones, like my stepdad got. It's not really that much, it was £15.40 on Amazon. <clears throat> and I got that through Prime, so it's delivered the next day, and that's the first time I've ever bought anything on Amazon. Ever. My stepdad's always using it, you know, it's, it's his favourite site to use. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that was actually... Pretty good, that'll come in useful, even if I don't use that particular wire on the model railway, it will come in useful. So, I suppose that brings us to the model railway. Well, I decided, with my input wisdom, to put a second loop in. I thought that'd make things a bit more interesting. I'll get to you in a minute, alright? So I start putting a loop in, I've got to tack this down, I've actually pulled this bit up earlier because I found that this bit of track was like there. <laughs> bit on the skew if so I'm straightening that bit out. It does sort of get wider there but that's because of the curves so I can't do much about that. Not unless I want to get really antsy with it and fine tune it like I did up there and I can't be bleeding asked. <laughs> so you can stay as it is. <clears throat> My throat's getting a bit dry. It's the problem when you make so many takes out of video, your throat does start to get a bit dry. There we go. So, I did have a fully working second loop, all nailed down, all nicely and whatnot. No, I thought my zoom was zoomed in for a second. <clears throat> and then, I was actually doing something down that side, and I happened to look at where that point motor was going to go and realised I couldn't put the point motor in because I was a bit of a dickhead and forgot to leave adequate space to get that point motor in 
between these two tracks. Now, some people would have suggested to put the point motor underneath, get one of the um, underside point motors, not the surface one, which would have been all fine and dandy and all well. I could have gone that route if it weren't for one problem. Where that point sits, right on top of this joist. <laughs> so there's nowhere to put it underneath. So I had no choice but to pull all that side up and make some adjustments to bring the track this way so I could get the point motor in. In doing so, I broke a crossover track, not this one. I had one half the size. In fact, I think it's in the top of this bin. Yep, this is the one I broke. Now, I tried everything to use this longer one, but the angles are different to this one, which made it difficult to actually use it. And the other thing is, it's too long as well for this particular layout. So I had to go on eBay and I found one of these when I eventually found the correct term for this, which I've actually forgotten. <laughs> Um, as you can see what I did, I popped a bit of rail out of there accidentally when I was pulling all the track up and at the, you see I've tried to glue it back in, which did work, the glue held but it was sitting too proud so the wheels were catching on it and the trains were either derailing or they were just stopping dead on it so I did have a lot of choice but to basically postpone that and buy another one of those which I'm hoping will arrive tomorrow <clears throat> um, for anyone interested, I got it from Pete Spares on eBay, and he also does have a website if you Google it. I know I'm not being paid to promote that. My stepdad's used him and had no problems, so I don't mind, you know, giving a bit of a, a free shout out, I suppose, to um, companies and sites that I actually like using. I don't see no harm in that. So I'm just waiting for that piece to arrive and I can carry on over there. <sighs> Gonna need some wire, aren't I? Next week I'm gonna order some silicon wire from Amazon. And he said Amazon, I don't know where the hell that would have come from. Amazon. Because uh, I'll use that to wire up the point motors and to um, jump by that track. There's a little bit of track there that I need to solder a couple of wires to, as you can see. Because on these crossover tracks, obviously they have to be insulated where they cross there, because otherwise you'll get dead shorts. Because obviously this will be an opposite polarity to this one, so you can't have them touching. Which means, if this track was live, any track this side, especially a siding, would be dead. And as the outer loop is going to cross this middle one to get to the sidings, I'm going to have to uh, just put in a couple of wires on that track, put them through the board, and then come up on the other side. So it's a simple thing to do. <clears throat> but uh, it'll just ensure that the whole lot is live, as it needs to be for DC. And the other thing I'm looking at buying as well, when I next get some money, is a different controller. So this is just temporary, so I don't really care that that one's on the piss. Um, but uh, I want one of those dual control units. You can get a single unit with the dual controls on. I've been looking at a bunch of those, but being such a noob, I don't know what would be the best one to get. So I think I'm going to be a complete noob and ask a noob question on one of the, uh, or some of the model railway groups I'm on and just look for some suggestions because I could fork out and go DCC digital which would actually allow me to uh, run like two trains well more m multiple trains I could have two a train going on each of these loops plus one shunting around in the sidings you know all at the same time but uh, it's rather expensive and to be honest, I personally can't justify that cost for this simple little layout. So if I had a big one like my stepdad, you know, taking up the whole room, or it was going around this whole bedroom, you know, had a whole room dedicated to the model railway, 
Then I would actually go DCC because I would say, right, it's worth it and it's going to be, make life a lot easier. But for a simple little layout like this, that I'm trying to keep, you know, relatively simple. Not that DCC is actually complicated. It takes a lot more wiring up more than anything and a lot more prep for the track. But it's actually pretty simple to use. But yeah, I just want to, I want to keep old school for this. I've always wanted to go old school. So I'm going to stick to it. Yep, um, I might change these power points as well and actually solder some wires to the track. Just because I think this bit's going to look tight. I might actually re-drill that hole and poke that wire through when I come to wiring up another controller. This one's actually pretty good. Um, there's a couple of downsides with this old one. I have to scroll this wheel round quite far before the train actually starts crawling along, but I can crawl the train along quite well, which is one plus for this. The other plus is, or the downside I should say, is that there's not much in the way of top speed, but the plus is really I don't need a very fast train going around this little layout, so the fact that doesn't have um, as fast a top speed as this one. This one can actually really... In fact, where is it? This one I had going around the track so fast it flew off that corner and just sort of slid. It did it so gracefully as well. I wish I had the camera running. It just sort of hit that corner, <laughs> tipped over and come off and just went and just slid on its side a little way and just sat in that little space on the corner. It just did it so sort of majestically. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, you know, this has got enough oomph in it to do that to at least the little locomotives when you whack it up. In fact, I still had some a little bit of give to go on that dial as well. Um, so yeah, it's not a bad thing that that does not have much of a top speed. But it does work. And it's actually quite simple because with this one I've got a little switch under here. I can actually put it in the middle and turn this controller off. Whereas that one's running all the time. But it's simpler because if you want to go one way, you just scroll the wheel that way. If you want to go the other, just do that. There we go. Put it in the middle for off. So I guess that can turn off, actually, if you put it in the middle. But the transformer and everything is actually built into this, whereas this one's got a separate one that plugs in. <clears throat> uh, I don't know how good it's going to be, but I want to plug this in and see if I can get this to work. It's got... Um, it's got controlled output, uncontrolled output, and a 15 volt output, but I don't know if that's controlled or not. It's got input sockets down there as well, but I don't see socket. <laughs> it's only got two of the um, nuts as well, which are currently on the uncontrolled one. I've got that and that together in a job lot of railway stuff I bought a few months ago actually. And this is the first time I've actually tried this one, that's working fine. Can't see no reason why this won't work. I am going to open this plug up and just check the wiring because the plug on this one it had um, red and brown, red and brown, brown and blue wires hanging out of the bottom so I did sort that out because that bugs me. It's not really that dangerous. Well I suppose you could still pull the wires out but it wouldn't have stopped it working but it just looks untidy, and like I said, you can still... That cord grip is not actually gripping that. <laughs> but I can't do this one-handed, can I? Otherwise, I was just going to open it up so we can all have a little peek. Oh! So, what we like... Cool, that shows the age of this plug. Look at that. Red, black and green. Holy oh, crap. That live wire has popped out, look. This is the reason why when I get second-hand electrics like this from car boots or whatever, I always check the plugs. And that live wire has actually um, come off and that fleck, yeah, that is loose. That's probably why it came. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the neutral's loose as well, look at this. Look. There you go. So I actually highly advise that if you're, good, if you're buying second-hand electrics 
doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a, a stereo system, a TV, a computer, just open the plugs up. If it's a plug that can be opened like that, obviously if, if it's a sealed plug you don't need to, but with a plug like this just open them up and check them. Yeah, that screw is actually loose. I think that's what's happened. It's just rattled loose over the years and uh, the earth one is actually still connected fine though, so even if I plugged it in and this sort of shorted out on something, it would have still tripped out, so that's a bonus. A 13 amp fuse, I think that's a wee bit big for that. <laughs> <clears throat> right. My stepdad messaged me earlier, he wanted to know if I had any bubble wrap. Unfortunately, I do not. I rarely sell anything on eBay now. <clears throat> Although I've got a few bits that I want to put on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many takes at this video, I've actually dried my throat out. Right. I will be glad when I've got this track all sorted down so I can lift this bloody table up out of the way for a little bit. It's been down like this and in a mess for the past week. Not that it's a problem. And oddly, despite how it hangs over the bed, I've not caught my legs on it once. Touch wood. <laughs> not caught my legs on it once. That's the one thing that did worry me, you know, if I was going to bang into it at night when I wake up for a pee or something. <sighs> Actually, speaking of toilet, every time I woke up last night, I had to run to the toilet. Because I had a icky tummy. Not from this end, from the other end. In fact, it hasn't been that brilliant all day, so I had to actually cancel what I was going to do with my stepdad today. But I couldn't keep off the friggin' toilet, which annoyed me. So I want to get things done, but never mind. <clears throat> yeah, I want to get done, but never mind, I can get it all done tomorrow. I think I've got the bits I need. Right, is there anything else? Oh, I got this for five pounds today as well. Very similar to the monitor that my brother loaned me. It's not exactly the same. In fact, it's a bit better, but I think it's the same brand. Got it for five pounds out of a charity shop. In fact, it was ten pounds when I first saw it. But uh, when I picked it up today, the price sticker had fell off, and a manageress, who just happens to be my cousin, was just walking in, and she said that. And there's a five pound sticker on it because the lady behind the counter was trying to find the sticker. Oh, my battery's going to die, so... Well, I was just getting fed up with this. All the bloody stand was all breaking everything on it. And I had that green line down it, so... This is a bit narrower though, so everything's a bit more squished and spread out a bit, but... And it's a VGA monitor. I haven't got DVI. My DVI plug's there. But it will do for now. Until I can find something a bit bigger and a bit better. So, on that note, as my battery's going to die and I need to charge this to make another video, I'm going to say goodbye. So, I hope you're all well. I hope you stay well and stay safe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.